All right, folks, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Um, I wasn't totally ready for this, but Papa <laughs> Junkie brought me over a couple of toys, and he's got a 2013 Shrewd here that he's uh, building up uh, for something. It's got the new Nomad scope, and he wants to get an LP Pro light on that Nomad scope. And then on the True Ball Excel, we've got the new, uh, the new Excel uh, scope. It's a 31 millimeter, and both of these uh, take two different LP Pro lights, uh, the same basic light, different adapters. And uh, he asked me if I needed a little mental break from work and come over and do something fun. So, so I said, yeah. And, and again, I'm not totally prepared for it, but um, and nobody in the world could ever build these up like Larry Popa, the inventor of the LP light, does. And some of the things I may show you, you may not be exactly perfect, but everybody's heard about the LP light. They see what it can do for you in target archery and hunting. If you get one built up, you know, semi-right, it'll, it'll, it'll blow you away, it'll amaze you what you can do with this thing. got these from Lancaster Archery Supply and uh, they've usually always got them in stock and get them out to you right away and um, so again I'll do my best it won't be quite to Larry's quality but uh, I'll explain to you what I'm doing I've already busted well, the hey, first regardless you're not in your office working okay no right? doubt fact, <laughs> fact. so so I busted uh, this first one open I got little pieces and parts everywhere and Larry's super good about you know laying out tons of instructions and diagrams and all this and all that good stuff um, and I appreciate that, Larry. Larry, don't yell at me. I'm one of them guys that, that I'm probably going to work on it, play with it, and build it. And then if I can't figure it out, I'm going to go other directions. So let's just let's just dive into this first one. Uh, first off, on the Nomad scope, I see that uh, you know we've got a, a razor style pin, and we've got 832 holes drilled around the housing. So I need to order an LP Pro Light 832 kit, which is what we got from Lancaster Archery Supply. Uh, the next thing I need to do is just decide how we're going to run it. Now, this one is currently set up with an up pin. So if someone's going to run an up pin, I have several different ways that I can set it up. And I am probably going to attach the light dead into the bottom. Or I will come out of the bottom, swing up around the side, and attach my tubing into the light from the side. So I've got those couple of options. When we get to the Excel 31 millimeter scope, we are going to have a special adapter that goes right down inside, comes out the end of the housing, and that is uh, that's that's super cool. It's a great configuration there. So, I just wish I could find one place that has everything I need in archery. That too much to ask, Dad. Just go to LancasterArchery.com. They have everything. I am just a baby. Just a baby. Okay, I've laid out some more of our, our goodies here, and um, I'll tell you generally what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take some of the tubing that comes with the kit. We're going to cut off a small piece of it, and what it's going to do is it's going to come right in behind the level. That piece of tubing is going to come down into our LED light, and then we're going to peel the plastic cap off the LED light, which I already did and we're gonna thread it right up in the bottom of the housing. A Couple of little tricks we'll do to help secure our fiber. This is a 10 thousandths pin, so when we ordered it, we asked for a 10 thousandths fiber. What I'm gonna do is cut a piece that's gonna be plenty long enough, let it come out the front of the scope, and I'm gonna come out the bottom of my tubing, and there's a special way that I'll burn it and flare it out a little bit, and I'll crunch the tubing down a little bit to make sure that it stays down in the end of our LED light and then uh, there's something special I do to the front. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and get into that. So I've cut a small piece off the tubing, enough that it can make it down into our LED light and just stick up 
behind the level. Now it's time to go ahead and get a little piece of 10 thousandths fiber optic. We won't need a very long piece for the size of this housing. So I'm going to come in and drop the 10 thousandths right into the pin. I'm going to leave plenty of it hanging out right there. Okay, I'm not steady enough to put that 10 thousandths in that hole. Okay. Yeah, it is. And you got to be careful with him. It's a, it's a little guy and he's fragile. Okay, we've got that stuff started. I'm going to go ahead and screw the LED into the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and flare out the end. Now there's a little trick to flaring out the end. And again, I'm not, I'm not the expert. I'm not going to do it like Larry would, but, but this is going to get you by. I'm going to take a little dog leg Allen wrench, and I'm going to get the end of it pretty hot. Now on this end, this is the end that's actually going to go down against the light. I am going to want this to actually touch the fiber. So when I get down close, I want it to start swelling up, turn into a little bit of a mushroom, and I just touch it. I got down really close, it started to swell, and then I actually touched the end. I'm going to cool it so I don't burn myself. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to get it down near my plastic tube, and I'm just going to squish the end of my plastic tube just a little bit. Just enough to get it to stay down in the end of my LED light. I have been engineered to be launched from today's high performance shooting equipment. I must withstand and deliver over 80 foot pounds of energy, shot after shot after shot. Powering through hide, flesh, and even bone. From the tournament trail to the trail head, when I return to my quiver, I'm still straight. I am Gold Tip, the toughest arrow you will ever shoot. Hopefully this will shed a little light too of why you walk up to Larry's trailer at an ASA event and he asks you to lead them because this oh, is not yeah. something you just throw on and screw in. This is to do it right takes time. It absolutely takes time and I'm I'm kind of rushing through this one because it's mine. Well, I'm, <laughs> no, and I'm joking. and I'm hiding from work, so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is. Uh... All right, I goofed up and pulled it out, so I got to start again. All right, yeah, that's why Larry typically has you leave it, and it does take a bit of time. I'm gonna retrim my plastic tube, and we're gonna do this one again. Okay, so we got the 10,000 fiber optic in the tube. We mashed the tube down into our little housing. I did just barely heat up the end of the tube that goes down in the LED light to keep it in there good and tight so it doesn't want to pop out and fall out. And you saw, again, how I heated the end that goes up against the LED light. I heated the end of the end of the Allen wrench and I just got close to it when it started to mushroom. I just touched it and pulled it away we will not touch the front piece. 
I want that front piece to swell just enough to keep itself from coming back through the pin, and I won't, uh, you know, I won't, I won't swell it up any more than that. So, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my fiber is all the way down against the LED light bulb, and I'm going to trim off pretty close. Okay, and we'll light this thing up again. So I want to show you how we're going to do the front of, uh, of this pin. We want to heat up this little Allen wrench again. We're going to get really close to it till it starts to flare. I don't want to make it a whole bunch bigger than its diameter. I just want it big enough where it's not going to come back through the pin. That should be good. Pull that wrench off. And then we're going to just poke it back through just a little. And if we need to, we can always go back in and retrim it and reburn it. But my next little step here, I want to protect these wires. So I'm actually going to give myself just a little bit of slack. I'm going to take this little rubber protector cap. You're almost creating a little service loop down there. Yeah. I just want to protect a little bit. Again, that, that, that's enough to get us going. And then, you know, I like to just turn it a little bit and I'm going to wrap it around the housing a couple of times, giving myself plenty of slack to be able to plug into the power pack. And I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a pigtail here. Doing that on both sides gives me a little room so in case anything gets pulled, nothing gets broke. Now the power pack, people wonder what, you know, what the deal is with it. It's, it's a really simple thing. It's not tough to deal with. You're using these little batteries, never touch the two together. You'll kill the life on them. So take your first one out. There's the plus. Put it in right towards the plus in the power pack. Just keep it fairly straight. And we'll take our next one. Do the same thing on the other side. Take the plus, shove it right towards the plus on the power pack. Make sure they're both all the way in. And put the box back together. And there's just about an infinite number of ways that you can actually mount this to your bow or to your side or whatever else. This one right here was set up to be Velcroed on and stuck to it. We don't have to do that immediately. Right now, I just want to see what kind of light output I'm getting. No, we did not. All the lights are on in the, in the room. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn this light on too, the studio light. Um, now, by the way, okay. folks, the point of this light is uh, if, if something's dark and we can't see it very well, you know, we want to have some light to see. But if you're shooting at something like a, a bright white target or a very well lit target out in the field and you're in the dark, you need to be able to overpower that light. It's great to be able to control it. So okay. there I've turned the light on. Now let's see if we're able to see it as I turn it up. And that's... I'm pretty sure if you can't see that one, we, we have other issues that, that we have to work with, not, not just our, uh, our light and our pen, but you know, of course, to the different situations, you want to control your light you know, to whatever that you're in so that you've got about this. I, I originally started thinking about blue because I went to an eye doctor and I, I told him my game and what I like to play and was there any things he could help me with. And he said, well, there's two things. One, the human eye contrasts blue better than anything else. That's, that's what he told me. Um, I can't tell you if that's right or not. I'm not an eye doctor, but, but he said the human eye contrasts that better, which uh, I'm going to believe him. Uh, there's no other target that I'm aiming at that I'm trying to hit that, uh, that I have an issue with that blue aiming at. Uh, the next thing he said was, in his opinion, uh, the human eye is uh, centered and aligned better vertically than horizontally. So that may be one reason why you see so many target archers either using an up pin or a down pin. And even in a lot of our hunting style sites, you know, like uh, we worked on a bow the other day that had an HHA site on it. And that's you know, a great single pin adjustable, you know, target site that people use for hunting. Um, this. Uh, that's something that seems to be a fact to me too. Either straight up or straight down, you seem to get a little better, uh, seem to get a little better uh, alignment with it.
Cool. Well, thanks for your time, Jack. No problem.